G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I've been thinking quite a bit about how I'm going to approach the remaining parts of the road build. Things like how do I build the bridge, how am I going to break this up over weeks to do it in the most, well, perhaps most efficient is not the right way to say that, but a slightly more efficient way than just going at it haphazardly, which is kind of how I often do things. And this is hard to navigate without my GPSs. Uh, so what I'm thinking is, I need to be able to charge up this platform too. And I need to be able to charge up this platform too, a lot, because the second bridge that I'm going to build is quite large and is going to be very reliant on this platform too for its construction. So I need to be able to recharge it fairly quickly. And that, to me, means I need the ability to recharge more at, the, at Steve's hole in the wall, and possibly also want to build some charging facilities at this close side of the final bridge. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to head back to the main base, and I'm going to collect the materials I require in order to build a bunch more wind turbines and some batteries so that I can come back, add a few more turbines to Steve's hole in the wall, and then start construction on that near side of the bridge as soon as I've mined far enough to get to it. Once I've built that facility for charging at the near side, I'm going to then go back to the main base and build a cargo hauling vehicle that might even include a little bit of a mini trailer with some welders on it so that I can weld the surface of the bridge at least a little bit quicker than doing it by hand. Maybe. I'm not actually sure that it's actually any faster, uh, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> especially with the design ideas I have in mind, but I might do that. Either way, I need to have a better cargo hauler than using the Rock Lobster because driving this back and forth is not super efficient. But I was thinking of doing the cargo hauler after I do the charging platform so that there's plenty of time for the wind turbines to charge the batteries, so then those batteries can charge this platform, and it all just kind of works, I think. I think that's roughly the right way to do things. Oh, base is over this way. So that is the plan. I think that I will probably get the charging facility, a little bit more work on Steve's hole in the wall, and the mining done today, but I might also start laying out the design for the cargo hauler in the construction yard by the end of today. I think that's about how much I'll be able to get done. So let's get cracking. I just had a thought. I've been making this trip back and forth a little bit too hard. Let's change my GPS colors so that they actually all stand out and it makes it a lot easier to follow. If I do this, if we start from yellow and then go progressively a little more red, I won't even need to see the numbers to see which way I need to go. I probably should have chosen something other than red, but now, even without seeing the numbers, I can tell which one's the next waypoint. Maybe, like, green to blue would have been smarter? Since red's going to be a bit too close, or the red may get a bit too close to a bad encounter thing. But it's pale enough, I think it, I think it'd be okay. Yeah, I should... I really need to remember to take advantage of that um, functionality of GPSs. Because it wasn't there when I... Well, because it's a relatively recent addition, it hasn't quite worked its way into my usual methods of play as yet. It's funny, from this angle it doesn't look steep. But if you look at my artificial horizon, you can see that it's actually quite steep, the direction I'm heading right now. I'm um, just trying to think where to park so I can make use of my lights while I build. Maybe here I'll do. So, start with Steve's hole in the wall, adding maybe another four turbines. That could get me to a point of power surplus enough that... Ooh, yeah, those are already drained pretty heavily. Uh, that I can get the batteries on here charged up. So, to expand the power capacity, power production capacity here, I think I'm going to expand over toward that ridge line as I can then put a few wind turbines and maybe a turret or so over there. 
And I think that's going to be a better spot to try and build up than where I'm currently at. Ah, uh, sorry. Not where I'm currently at. Then that side. Man, I really wish we had the piece to go between these since we've now got most of the other necessary parts. Having to use these feels a bit sad. Oh well. Maybe one day we'll get it. We've gotten so many of the other shapes. <laughs> Could happen. Kind of wish there was a way to attach lights to these pillars. Uh, even if it was only the... Oh, you can. Oh. Ignore me. I didn't think I could actually attach lights to the pillars. Uh, let's not use these then. Should have checked that before I just assumed it wouldn't work. Hooray! Now... Do I use this platform to go and place something high up on this pillar, or do I just go and place something on the side? Just use the side. Yeah, that's so much better. <laughs> now I can actually see things. So what I've been doing is, around here, been using those half-inverted corner pieces, or whatever they're called. And I think continuing that pattern around here, and building little bits of armor that stick out from the terrain, which I can place the wind turbines on, will make this place look bigger without looking grander, I think. Uh, at least that's that's the intent. Because I don't want this to look grand, it's supposed to be a hole in the wall. It's going to be a bit of a dive bar kind of place. So, I think, uh... Oh, I didn't realise these were small grid too. Huh. Uh, so I don't want to make it appear too grand as I build it. Now, do I want to try and place a turbine? Oops. Do I want to try and place a turbine around... Oh, come on, let me get up there. No. Dang it. I'll go around this way then. Try and decide whether I want to place a turbine in... Don't! Oh! <laughs> My parkour skills are failing me. Because I am rushing. Ah, in here. Nah, I'll go a bit further. I will just do this one. Oh, no. oh, why, why? Uh, yeah, start block there. And even though people pointed out that I do have this platform and I should probably be using it for this because this is what it's for, I'm instead going to use ramps to get myself up to the height I need to in order to place and weld the turbines because of the battery power issue stuff. Hmm. Fully recharged in two days. I need quite a few more turbines. I think if I can get that down to a few hours, this might be a usable solution. Otherwise, I'm going to have to move power from the main base up here. But that's not even great because the main base doesn't have huge power production. Oh well. More engineering problems for me to solve. Not a bad thing. Something I hope I remember to do later on is come back and move those lights to the tops of these towers. I'd much prefer them to be at the top, but I just don't want to use the platform right now, nor do I want to build scaffolding to get up to them. I want to preserve the platform's battery power for the bridge and kind of avoid using it as much as possible for builds like this one, unless I actually have to. Because if I can keep its power preserved for the key bits, I'll hopefully be able to get them done and then do a lot of the fiddlier bits later on when I've been, you know, building Steve's hole in the wall, for example. Because building something like that, definitely don't need this platform, will be a somewhat time-consuming build and should allow this platform to charge up to then do stuff like this afterwards. Huh, just had an interesting thought. With all the effort I'm putting into getting extra power here, Hopefully I'll remember to use the fact that there will be stored power here later on if I'm ever needing it for another project at the main base. Because I could always come up here and just use something like the cargo transport. If it's got enough batteries, recharge it here, run back to the other base and dump off some of the charge. It's a bit inefficient moving charge like that because you do have power losses with transfer between batteries, but still could end up being a valid use for this stuff when it's just sitting here between uh, trips of getting more magnesium. I suppose the other thing this does do is it's a decoy for the main base. <laughs> There's a chance that any Reaver would actually attack this instead of the main base first, which is slightly better. 
despite the efforts put in. There's no critical infrastructure here. We've now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turbines here. And with Omicron's terrible wind, that will allow us to recharge a large grid battery in 17 hours. I mean, that's also recharging for small grid batteries too. So it's not just the large grid battery. That's not exactly great. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't think I can really justify building another 10 or more turbines though. Because yes, I haven't made these as maximally efficient as I can, but the gains that I would have by making them maximally efficient, it would still not be enough having just these seven. So, what to do? What to do, what to do, what to do? I don't get much solar power here, like much at all, because of the mountain, so there's not much point putting solar down. Getting hydrogen from the hydrogen facility is next to impossible. That's why I need this magnesium so that I can take out the bases so we can't use hydrogen. I'm kind of stuck. With the amount of resources I've been using up, I'm actually wondering if I've started to have an impact on the power supply at the main base. The assembler's been working overtime producing all of the components that I've been spending, so it is possible that I've... Oh build this cargo. Uh, nuts. Should I build another? Yeah, I'll build another battery here. I brought enough parts for another three large grid batteries. Yeah, now that I've got something on the other side of that little bridge, I'm actually happier with this shape. I will probably clean out a little bit of that voxel as well, especially that bit that's kind of just hanging around on the left-hand side there. Might put a bit of a beam across uh, block back from where the warning stuff is as well, just to make this look a bit more industrial and rugged. Got a few ideas around this place for making it look less like a wind farm and more like <laughs> something of interest. Because, yeah, kind of does just look like a wind farm right now. Now that the sun's up, I think it's time for me to start doing some drilling and leave Steve's uh, wind farm <laughs> and let it uh, hopefully accumulate a bit of charge for that platform for once I have reached the bridge start position. I've been thinking a bit about how I'm going to make these parts with the overhangs look a little bit more sensible and I haven't really come up with a great plan yet. I wanted to build some fences, but I tried a couple of things in creative mode, fiddling around those sorts of areas. I can't quite come up with anything that I'm happy with yet. So I'm going to do a bit more fiddling this week and see if I can either come up with a fencing plan that works or just go with arcs of armor that come down or arcs of the beams that come down from the top. Because I do need something for these spots to make them look a little bit more interesting and potentially to be a power source for lighting along the way. But I just, yeah, I'm not happy with any of my, not happy with any of my ideas and I think I'm going to need this platform for it. So I kind of want to delay doing those bits until near the end really. Which is unfortunate because I kind of wanted to have each stretch of the road look finished along the way. I'm hopeful that I can reach the point of the bridge start by the time, well, while I've still got light on this side of the mountain, which is why I thought I'd start this drilling at first light. Two and a half k's to go. Maybe I won't quite make it to the bridge, but oh well, we'll see. <laughs> I'm gonna try. This is certainly uh, a spot where a sense of vertigo is, a, is very real. As you can see from my artificial horizon, this bit of road's gotten a little bit crooked. So what I've done is I've raised up the left hand side and dropped the right just a little bit. I'm going to reverse over the road and see if this is another method I can use to try and get things level by actually 
correcting the part of the road that went wrong rather than trying to make the next section of road fix it up. That's that's definitely better. Yeah, that's pretty close. All right, let's do that. Just one more little pass. The way that this mining vehicle is working makes me think that most of my other attempts at roads might have just been too hasty and I might have tried to drive on them with vehicles that weren't prepped for that sort of well, I was about to say off-roading, but <laughs> that sort of road surface. So something that was not as smooth as the regular voxels. Because it never will be, but it can be smooth enough to drive on, as shown here. So I think having more wheels and having softer suspension tends to help a little bit for driving on these sorts of surfaces. And definitely makes a big difference for mining on it. So if you're going to build your own mining truck... My experience is that more wheels equals more better. You are definitely better off having lots of wheels and having really soft suspension so that any particular wheel that's raised up... Let's see if any of these are. Yeah, so you can see that the second from the rear wheel is quite high, but by allowing it to go high while the others sit correctly, the whole vehicle remains more level. So those little ripples that you can get in the voxels in Space Engineers are dampened by your suspension. That's the other reason for not using suspension for adjusting the height left and right. Because if you do that, you reduce your suspension travel and that means that you can't take advantage of the suspension for leveling off your vehicle. Well, you can't take as much advantage of it. You'll still do it, it just won't do it as well. I'm sure there are people who've used suspension to do that with a reasonable amount of success, but I just don't think it's as good as this setup. I think I'm roughly where I was intending to start this bridge. But I can't... I'm not confident. <laughs> I can't tell how far away that spot is. I really needed to mark that with this platform when I came out the first time. And I regret not doing so. Um, maybe I'll just continue. So it does look like it'll be a long... Hmm. Hmm. Indecision. Racked with indecision. So it looks like it's about halfway between here and where the magnesium mine it will be, which would make this a one kilometer long bridge. That's really big. That's really, really, really big. I don't think I want it to be that big. Oh yeah, that's right. In the comments over the last couple of weeks, a few people who've built similar machines to this have reminded me of something that I had intended to do with this, but decided not to for aesthetic reasons, which is for making these roads, it is usually advisable to make your drill width a decent amount wider than your wheel width. The reason that that's helpful is, one, it gives you a, whoo, that's close to the edge, a nicer driving surface because the bottom part of the drills where it's flat, rather than the curvy bits that come round from the last drill, will be further out from your wheels. I haven't done this, that here because aesthetics, but also because the weight of the full drills on those hinges might have been too much. But if you were trying to make just a road builder, Adding an extra row of drills or even just putting a conveyor between each of the drills to add an extra meter width to the drilling width might be enough to make this easier to make turns. Because each time you make a turn, those, those rear wheels start to get up that curve or some of the side wheels will as well. And that's what sort of makes you tilt. So every time I try and turn and follow the cliff, that things tend to get a little bit less level for me. We're down to below two kilo- oh, this is bad. This is real crooked. I think this might be about where I want to start this bridge. Because I do want it to- I do want this one to actually be not attached on the left hand side. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. This is where I'm going to try it. Okay, so we want to head roughly for that spot over there, which means I kind of want to- since this is the edge, look at the edge of it. 
and see if that's going to be deep enough. That is a no. No, it is not. Let's make it a little bit lower than that. I wonder how far I can place this out without using this platform. I've got like 300 blocks on me, so I should try and get... Oh, wait, no. Uh, I need to use different blocks because I want to make this bridge differently. Um, let's get rid of those. I kind of want to have this supported on beam blocks because I can save myself some material by using these light armor panels. Although, I kind of didn't want to use them because of their really, really repetitive texture. But if I'm going to use the concrete, it should be okay. So the thought here is, I'm going to go out as far as I can until I've got this bridge the width that I want it to be. And once I've run out of wall, that's when I'll have to go back and get this platform. But I didn't, didn't need to bring it up yet, so I figure don't bring it up yet. Against that. This is weird. This is the same... This is basically the same problems I was having with the placement from within the cockpit. Oh, that's right. The other thing I was going to do, <laughs> which I've just totally forgotten to do, was build a power source at the start of this bridge. Uh, how wide do I want this? I think I want the roadway to be wider than the other one. So my truck is kind of three blocks wide. So the roadway is going to be four of these panels. And then we'll have the I-beams on either side of it. Just thinking, is there any reason to avoid doing even number of blocks for the width of the bridge? If I wanted to do a dotted line down the middle, there would be, but I don't want to do a dotted line because this isn't a two-way road. This is a one-way road, so having a dotted line down the middle makes zero sense whatsoever. Oh, <laughs> I just realized I can see through this. I hadn't looked down yet. <laughs> and here safely. If I fall from here, I'm done. But I just want to, I really just want to get this thing out as far as I can. I think that's as far as I dare go. Come on, walk back up, walk back up. <laughs> I really shouldn't be taking these chances. So the idea for this bridge is it's going to be a suspension bridge. So once I'm out a little bit further, I'm going to build two posts on either side of it that go way up high. And I'm going to use hinges and stuff to make the suspension uh, cables so that it looks like they're actually providing the support for the main bridgeway that goes over to near where I think that... Uh, whatchamacallit, picnic spot is going to be. Oh well, I've started this bridge. I realised I probably should have done some surveying first and at least put down like a piston with a camera on top so I could see exactly where that camera is going to point to uh, or have gone into creative mode and built like a long stalk of blocks so that I could use a projector and project out how far it was going to be. But I've started now, so... I'm kind of tempted just to continue going and see what happens. Yeah, this bridge will, be, bridge will be comfortably wide enough. So depending on how I do the support pillars, I'm potentially going to use the plate again on top of that row of uh, beam blocks so that there's a little raised footpath beside the road. So I think that'll look interesting. If I go all Austin Powers, I can actually turn around on this bridge too without creating a turning bay, which is nice. All right, head down, come back with this platform, place down the bridges for the, well, place down the blocks for the length of the bridge. Then when I come back, I'm gonna bring everything I can in the rock lobster, rock lobster, rock lobster, so that I can build some charging facilities at the, at this end of the bridge, or at least some batteries so that I can power the lights since I don't, necessarily after how since after how long it's going to take for the batteries at Steve's hole in the wall to charge I'm not really sure that it's going to make all that much of a difference to how often I can use this platform putting down a couple of wind turbines up here and perhaps the top of the towers for the suspension bridge will be the best place to put a couple of turbines and with the towers being four to six blocks apart maybe I could even squeeze some solar power up there Without it being too ugly and obvious. 
If the aesthetics didn't worry me, I probably could have made the bridge surface out of solar panels, but I just didn't like... I just didn't think the look of it would be right. Let's roll. Got limited time, limited fuel. Oh, I can't wait till I've got this road designed and pretty all the way I, all the ways I want it to. I think it's going to look really, really cool. Well, it certainly takes less time flying here. <laughs> than driving. Uh, I'm really worried that I've set up this bridge wrong. I guess I'm about to find out. I have 300 steel plate on me, so if I don't reach the other side by the time I've run out of them, then this bridge is too long. Oh, come on. Place, don't be like this. I need these to place quickly. Arg! Why? Why, 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 why? Oh, I got in... Oh, dang, I got in the front of the cockpit as well. I didn't get in at the back. I was about to hop out <laughs> and die. So a few people told me that if I hop out and place a couple of blocks, then hop back into the cockpit, the cockpit placement uh, kind of resets, which seems to be true. So I'm back to being able to place these blocks easily. Just started imagining how complex this would be to build if I had to actually consider structural integrity. Because uh, I have now gotten a long, long way and still have a... Oh, maybe about halfway, actually. I think this is going to be too big. But I don't know how I would make one smaller yet still have the suspension look to it. Maybe I can't do the suspension look. Uh, hmm. Oh, let's just see. Keep going. Keep going and then I can have a bit of a think about this once I've got the real scale down. Oh yeah, this thing is way too big. It's... I just placed down 300 blocks. And I'm barely part of the way there. Like, I think I've probably got another 200 blocks to go. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think... I think the scale of this construction is just... Not right. What I really want to do is... So I'll come back and I'll grind this thing down. But what I should do now, rather than hang on a rather than um, risking messing this up again, is scout out where I should be starting this bridge. Which I'm feeling might actually be over here. Because this is, I think... Yeah, this is the bit! Dang it, this is where I wanted to do it. So let's make a GPS for bridge start. And flip around. Make sure I get myself level. And then let's pick there. See how far away that is from bridge start just fly perfectly level. Bridge end is kind of here. So bridge start is, there we go, 279 meters. That's a bit more appropriate. <laughs> yeah, should have marked this out. Good job splits. Now you're gonna have to grind that whole thing off. Which is going to be, uh, let's just call it terrifying. Probably do a little bit from this platform actually. I know a few of you will be disappointed that I didn't go ahead and build the bridge at this scale. But being completely honest about it, I think there's a very real chance that if I tried to build something this big, I'd never finish it. It would take me so long to get it done that the only way it'd ever get finished would be if I came back to this world and did it in creative. The scale means that doing detail work is just going to be too hard. And I'd rather build something small and detailed and with little bits of story and stuff in it than building something giant and quite repetitive. So I think I'm doing the right thing going for the smaller scale build. I did the wrong thing not scouting out the location and marking it. Because I did scout out the location, I just didn't mark it when I came back here before. And I should have done that. That was definitely a mistake. Oh. Oh, I just had a thought. I could leave this bridge here. Leave these parts. Because it can be like one of those abandoned bridge projects that, you know, do happen. I'll leave part of it here. Okay, this is, this is terrifying. I kind of just want to lop this whole thing off now that I'm out, out here standing out here. Hmm. I'm sprinting along here, and it is taking me forever to get to the end. I'm so gonna die. 
if I keep doing this, and I need to do this, because I can't just leave this giant, I can't just leave this giant spike of a beam sticking out of the terrain. It just, no, too silly. Leaving part of the bridge construction that's looks vaguely supported by the terrain, sure. This bit, no. There was something that was said in a comment, I can't remember who said it, but I did appreciate the thought behind it, which was that while it's all well and good to add these little bits of story, story that comes by naturally or organically like this bridge being attempted and then abandoned, sometimes end up being, well, often end up being kind of cooler parts of story. So I like that I'm going to leave this bridge and put some little do not enter danger sort of signs at the start of it. Because it's another point of interest that harks back to something that I've actually did and was a mistake. As opposed to some of the other bits which will have all been quite deliberate to look like they were telling a story that might have happened as opposed to this one which is a story that did happen even though I could have erased all evidence of it. If I felt it was more likely for stuff like this to happen on multiple occasions and cause me to do different things I would totally just I wouldn't try and create my own little story bits but it, it just doesn't happen that way. Also there is very little effect from my headlights on these beam blocks. My O2 bottles are out, so I'm going to head back and bring the rock lobster up here. See if I can figure out a way to make this bridge look like it was under construction and stopped. That looks interesting. I've still got quite a bit of that beam left to grind down, but it is really, really hard to see how much further it goes. Oh, actually, not too mad. I did get most of it done. Cool. So I'll come back up with some stuff to build a nice little... Uh, Diorama, I guess. I can't think of a different word for it. A little scene. A little point of interest on the road to Magnesium. The road to Blamo. I'm thinking of a practical use for this little uh, bridge to nowhere. And I reckon I can make it look a little bit interesting, putting some stuff around that looks like a construction site, but also looks a bit run down, while putting down a turbine for a bit of power an oxygen tank and a vent to pressurize the tank and use that as a little way to refill my oxygen bottles when I'm almost halfway along this road because that bridge start is pretty much halfway which kind of works out nicely. Uh, where's a vent? So I've added most of the other bits. I might also grab a few of the bits I would need for these pipes. I reckon they're going to look a l like a sort of thing you'd find at a construction site for a bridge. Let's see if I've loaded up too much stuff. No, nah, should be good. Let's roll. Obviously I can come back if I need more stuff, but I was hoping I'd be able to get this little build done in one shot. Alright, step one is to drill out where the road's going to go from here. I think. That's a sensible step one. Because then I can make plans around what this is going to look like. And see what space I've got to work with. Alright, uh, we are 1.83 kilometers from the magnesium mine. Not too shabby. Might just park here. Should be a good spot. So, I need to... Oh, probably first order of business, rather than going out there and grinding that thing off, is establishing a power supply here and establishing the oxygen bottle refilling thing here. As we are kind of, yeah, just a bit past halfway. So I think it's a good spot to have the O2 thing and conveniently works with the whole me wanting a bit of a story thing. So the stuff that I want to build here is the oxygen tank, the vent. Uh, I want to build some little barricades and I want to make it look like they laid down the stuff to begin building this bridge, but just never got there. So I'll probably fill this about as much as I filled the one down at Steve's hole in the wall, because the likelihood of me running through 10,000 litres of oxygen here is pretty, pretty low. But it's just such a good way to get a 
oxygen supply that goes in bottles, since I'm going to have to walk back out on this bridgeway and try and grind down what's there. Alrighty. Let's toggle you off. You stay on. And now... A way to refill my bottles right here. Excellent. And the other thing I wanted to put down here... Some of these freight containers are in a different finish. And then my temporary turbine needs to come down. Or temporary looking turbine, I should say. Okay, that's kind of starting the look that I wanted. Then I need some road barricades, which I think can be made pretty well out of these low, not the cover walls, the fire covers. Because they already have the little warning strip on them. Uh, if we make this in hazard armor, it doesn't do what I want it to do. So we'll stick with rusty. And we'll go with a brighter yellow. So th my plan is to put these down Energy and then critical. use some uh, use some LCDs to add a bit more detail to this stuff. I think a scene like this could really benefit from messing around with some small grid stuff. But... I don't really want to start putting... I'm really tempted to, but I probably shouldn't <laughs> put down that sort of stuff here. Oh, so tempting. What? Why won't that place there? Is that not an attachment point for it? That's annoying. Dang. I really wanted that to place there like that, because I think it works for a do not enter. Uh... We'll get rid of the fire cover wall. And instead, I think these work. Yeah, there we go. On display. I think it'd be cool to put some sort of proper picture on this. For now, though, the image I think we should go with is either the cross or danger. I think danger. But I think something saying bridge out with the danger and that sort of thing. I'd like to spend a bit more time messing around with making some custom LCD pictures for Survival Impossible. And I'm hoping I can get some time to do that. Maybe soonish. Uh, put some of these railings in. Just for a bit of detail. So we've got that work light. There's another idea that was suggested to me for making street lights which I'd like to use on the main bridge, but I might use to create some streetlights here now. So the concept is use neon tubes like this, start down the bottom, then place another one with a, go to a straight. So once you're at the height that you want, go with a little curved piece like so, then neon tubes out. Now, you want to make sure that you are using black, the blackest black, for placing these down. Because otherwise the neon will glow, and unless you're making some sort of, you know, future city that makes sense to have that sort of look, it's probably not what you're after. Then we use the same end piece as we did at the base. This one, neon tubes end two. Pop it there. Now, this was the bit that I haven't figured out exactly what looks best. I think it's best having a corner light there and then one on the outer edge as well. Like so. Placing a pair of them and then that becomes our street light. Now since this is all going to be a bit run down here and is intentionally a bit awful looking, I don't need to worry about welding up those pieces, but normally I would. Okay, so I made this too tall because <laughs> the light from those lights barely reaches the ground. For me, I personally didn't really like the look of whoops of putting uh, just a normal interior light here because it doesn't stick out right at the end of the light post and so it would be better from a lighting point of view to be able to use the interior light since place one down and then we go and do our settings being able to reach 20 meters means you can have that thing quite high and still providing pretty good illumination for the area now for this one i might leave it at that 
If you want to make the inside surface of it look a bit more robust, what you can do is use a build state of a ladder and go like this. And now the vertical part looks a bit more sturdy. I can't think of any blocks that are good for creating the angled parts, like creating an angled support there. But yeah, that's something I wanted to show off and I want to do on the other bridge. So I want to use those, that rough design as a light post on the other bridge when I go and finish off the detail work on it. But now, the thing I need to do is go out and grind down the other bits of this bridge that should not be there yet, that should not remain. I really like these industrial conveyor sorters. They look really cool in all of their forms. Like, whether they're build state, fully constructed, whatever. It's it's a really nice design for integrating into builds to make pipe white, piping look heaps more interesting. I think they did a great job on this particular thing. Uh, we're going to go heavy rust because this is going to stay as build state. Uh, I might just go one and two and pipe. Like so. So yeah, when you're driving up, this is what you'll see. I think that's nice. I think that's going to make it... <laughs> make a positive use out of this ridiculous stuff up that I made. Uh, how many steel plate did I bring up with me? Enough. Good. So I'm thinking I'll uh, weld up some of these plate. Yeah, I'm happy with this little spot. If you got any little ideas for what I could do to decorate this sticking with large block, let me know, as I'd be keen to do a bit more to make this feel even more like a construction site that was starting to build a bridge but got abandoned. Because I, I feel like this is going to be a good way station. But for now, let us continue and get to the start of the bridge proper. Ooh, these little platforms off to my right could be really good as a lookout if they can get a sh if you can see the bridge from them otherwise I'll find some other spots but I would like to build a few lookout spots along the route as well or at least one maybe I'll just do one <laughs> maybe a few is a bit bit too much of a stretch okay that is pretty much exactly where I want to be I feel like I've made some pretty good progress today even with the uh slight stuff up with the bridge which ended up being kind of cool anyway because it gives me something of interest to have along this road that came about organically which is kind of cool next time i am going to get this bridge built and i will have it in the right spot this time which is good and i think there's a small chance i might even get to well almost all the way to the magnesium mine Hopefully I'll also get some time to start working on Steve's hole in the wall and a few more of the decorative bits along the route. So there is all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then.